Hi, and welcome to Why Do Countries Exist, an episode on Japanese political parties. So today's episode was requested by Glue, Fan Fanatic, and Sam Volkers all on YouTube. If you want me to do another country's political parties, please either comment it down below, send me an email, or put a request in the feedback and request form in the description. I currently have requests to do Turkish parties, Danish parties, Serbian parties, Greek parties, South Korean parties, Moroccan parties, Chilean parties, Ukrainian parties, German parties, Swiss parties, and many more. Before I begin, I'd also like to thank the CDP for responding to my questions and helping me write the CDP section of the episode. I greatly appreciate it. And then I'd also like to recommend a series on YouTube by Langley Esquire called Japanese Politics 101. It's a series of conversations around important issues in Japanese politics, ranging from political institutions, to explanations of certain groups, to even explaining several parties we will talk about today. It is a very inside baseball or wonky type feel, which can make it a little difficult to 100% understand every example they bring up, but it overall does a very good job explaining certain aspects of Japanese politics. A link to it will be in the description. So normally, I'd spend some time talking about the background of Japan or the legislature, but it actually makes more sense if I just get right into it and talk about the Liberal Democratic Party of Japan, or GU Minshuto, or LDP. The LDP dominates Japan, and I don't mean like, oh, they usually get a lot of votes and they've had a couple prime ministers. No, no, no. In the 64 years since the 1958 election, the LDP has been the ruling party, not just a part of the government, but out and out the party running the country, for 60 of those years. They have lost the popular vote for the House of Representatives only once in the 2009 election, where they still came in second place and then came back next election with a legislative majority. For a liberal democracy, the LDP is head and shoulders above all the other parties in terms of political power and organizational base. I'm sure you are asking yourself, why? Well, I'm not going to get into all the reasons why right now, but you'll see throughout the episode. So what does the LDP represent? The LDP was founded in the 1950s as a merger of two conservative parties that sought to fight off the rising leftist movement in Japan that emerged at the end of the Second World War and sought to bring a stable government to the country. It ran the country continuously until 1993, when the opposition managed to unite and oust it from power. While the LDP did return to power 11 months later as the opposition coalition broke apart, the LDP never was the same, as the old electoral system that greatly benefited the LDP was replaced with the current electoral system. It, in the latest House of Council election back in July of this year, managed to get 34% of the vote, still larger than any other party, but with almost two-thirds of the country voting for a different party than them. The LDP is a broadly conservative and right-wing party. Because of the LDP's success and size, it has many members, and these members are often divided into different factions. These factions are actually quasi-institutionalized, with factions in the LDP grouped into around six different factions. I'll get back to the LDP, but I've made reference to the Japanese Diet or Japanese legislature a bit, so it's probably best if I explain it. The lower house of the Diet is the House of Representatives. The House of Representatives is made up of 465 representatives who are elected via two ways. 289 are elected from 289 districts found throughout the country via first past the post. Notably, there are more rural districts in the country, which are areas that tend to vote LDP more. The remaining 176 representatives are elected via proportional representation. Another notable quirk of this system is the proportional seats are divided up without taking their constituency results into account. What this does is it tends to result in whichever party got the most votes to receive disproportionately more seats. So the LDP last election won 35% of the vote, but won almost 55% of the seats. The House of Representatives will vote on rules and regulations, and will elect the Prime Minister, the most powerful political figure in the country, and their cabinet. The upper house is the House of Councillors. The House of Councillors is made up of 265 councillors who, again, are elected via two ways. 147 are elected via single transferable vote, from 45 districts found throughout the country. STV is a form of ranked choice voting. I talked about it a bit in the Irish Political Parties episode, so if you are really curious on how it works, you can check that out. The remaining 98 councillors are elected via proportional representation, which, again, ignores the results from the 45 districts. The House of Councillors also only elects half the councillors every election. The House of Councillors, while it does vote on rules and regulations and has some impact, 
is considered the much less prestigious body in the Japanese diet. Apparently, while the House of Representatives is made up of more straight-edged politicians, the House of Counselors is more likely to have eccentric members, and a lot of celebrities that get into politics go into the House of Counselors. Also, fun fact about the diet, you can actually tour the building itself. So when I visited Japan back in 2014, I actually got to go into the House of Counselors, although no politicians were present that day. So back to focusing on the LDP. The LDP, as stated previously, is divided between several different factions. There are six major factions. Importantly, it seems that while these factions may have a slight ideological tilt to them, oftentimes they just serve to help members of said faction rise to the top, and gain power in Japanese politics. That being said, there are ideological differences within the LDP. Some members are more nationalistic, while others are less so. Some support free market economics, while others support an almost social democratic economic model. Some support constitutional reform that would allow Japan to militarize and become more of a rival to China, while others want a more friendly policy with China. But overall, the majority of its members lean right. The current ruling faction within the party is the Koshikai, a faction led by current LDP leader and Prime Minister Fumio Kishida. Kochikai is a more moderate faction within the LDP, talking about working with the PRC on climate change and promoting greater LGBT rights. The LDP overall is supported by a quite wide range of groups. As stated previously, rural areas are more likely to support the LDP, with farmers and particularly those living on western Honshu being big backers of the party. The party also has historically been supported by the business community, ranging from large corporations all the way down to small businesses. Small business owners actually tend to be one of the more important players in the more local LDP chapters. It also gets more support among the bureaucracy from some hard-right nationalist organizations, certain Buddhist, Shinto, and New Wave religious groups, along with people who are over 70. The party has 261 representatives and 118 counselors. The LDP's dominance in Japanese politics means it can try and take credit for any good that has taken place in the country, but at the same time, Anything people dislike about Japan can also be blamed on them. Because the LDP has run the country for so long, you can occasionally see criticism of the LDP arguing that they have created either a flawed democracy or even a de facto one-party state. There's a sense among some that no matter what, the LDP will win almost every election, so really there is little accountability for LDP politicians that mess up. While Japan is often rated as having a low level of public corruption, LDP politicians are not free from corruption scandals, with, for example, 2018 seeing several scandals around ex-Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. Other accusations around the LDP are allowing ultra-nationalists into their ranks and denying war crimes Japan committed in World War II, being allegedly propped up by the CIA in its early years, often spending recklessly, and being fiscally irresponsible, suffering from infighting, and recently coming more to the forefront with Abe's assassination, the LDP holding ties to the Unification Church, which, put very quickly, is a controversial religious group. Speaking of religious groups, let's go to the Komeito party. If you break down the three characters in Komeito, it roughly translates to something like Justice Party or Good Governance Party. Komeito ideologically is self-described as humanist, and I've seen it referred to as centrist or conservative. However, it's best to describe the party as the party for Soka Gakkai. I can confess my knowledge on the group is limited, but it seems to be a mix of Buddhism and New Wave religious beliefs, broadly teaching a humanist message and is gaining more prominence in Japan. Komeito has been allied to the LDP since 1999, helping the LDP secure a majority in the House of Counselors. While Soka Gakkai doesn't even come close to being the largest religion in Japan, Soka Gakkai members are very loyal to the party, almost exclusively voting for them, and thus making them a very powerful force in Japanese politics. It got the most support last election in the South, particularly in Okinawa and Kyushu. It currently has 32 representatives and 27 counselors. It is currently headed by Natsuo Yamaguchi, a former representative and current counselor. Kometo argues that the main goal is, quote, human happiness. It supports a welfare state, opposes the Japanese making their life all about business, wants a fight for more wage increases, supports a strong private sector, wants to raise the sales tax, and supports a smaller bureaucracy. Its foreign policy is more dovish when compared to the LDP, opposing an antagonistic relationship towards China, and supports greater effort to strive towards peace and unity in the world, but does support Japan rearming the self-defense forces and is pro-Ukrainian. It also backs more autonomy at the local level, 
backs more environmental regulations, and supports cracking down on war crimes around the world, opposing mines and robotic weapons. Kometo's biggest criticism is their relationship to Soka Gakkai. While they claim that Soka Gakkai is just a, quote, major electoral constituency, the average person on the street seems to see Kometo as the political arm of the organization. Soka Gakkai, while it isn't as controversial as it used to be in the 70s, is still looked at with suspicion by a decent amount of the public. Soka Gakkai is, slash was, accused of allegedly mismanaging funds in the organization, using shady tactics to keep its political power, targeting its ex-members and critics, being closed off from the rest of Japan, and some have accused it of being a cult. Also, the fact that Kometo is allied with the LDP has led to criticism as the opposition sees them as just a tool for the LDP. The LDP is in this uncomfortable relationship with them, needing Kometo to keep its large legislative majority, but also many members not feeling comfortable around the party, seeing them as using the LDP to protect Soka Gakkai from punishment from the authorities. We now go to the opposition, with Japan's main opposition being the Constitutional Democratic Party, or Riken Minshuto, or CDP. The CDP is a social liberal and centrist party that can trace its origins to a reformist breakoff of the Japanese Socialist Party and moderate conservatives. Its predecessor party, the Democratic Party, actually managed to take control of the country in 2009, but lost in the next election in 2012. The CDP in its current form was formed in 2020 and since has been the largest opposition party in Japan. It does have factions like the LDP, although its factions are less prominent and organized. That being said, it does have members who lean more to the left and others who lean more to the right. Its main support base is a combination of urban workers, those in unions, particularly postal workers, government workers, those in the telecommunications industry, etc., and college students, with those in northern Honshu, Tokyo, or Hokkaido more likely to vote for the party. It also gets more support from those in their 60s. However, it's also important to note that urban workers aren't as loyal to the CDP as they once were, and more and more union members or those in urban areas are more likely to vote just for individual candidates they like, rather than specific parties. The CDP has 97 representatives and 39 councillors. It is currently headed by Kenta Izumi, a representative. The CDP backs generally moderate and center-left ideas. It opposes a militaristic Japan, arguing that Japan should spend its defense budget focusing more on reinforcing shelters, planning evacuation routes, and preparing defensive systems rather than focusing on conventional weapons, and is hostile towards nuclear weapons or nuclear power. It believes in higher wages for workers, more support for small businesses or medium-sized businesses, more funding for social services like healthcare and childcare, supports free tuition for higher education, and supports renewable energy. In terms of social policy, it opposes discrimination, supports greater LGBTQ rights, and is sympathetic towards grassroots democracy. It also backs more decentralization at the local level, opposes gambling, and wants more funds to go towards disaster relief. A large problem that the CDP faces is just low expectations from them and the idea that the LDP will always rule the country. Most people just assume the LDP will win every election, so many people who might vote for the CDP or other opposition parties just don't vote, making it more difficult for the CDP to grow. Japanese political parties are also given money for campaign expenses based on the number of seats they hold in the Diet. Since the LDP is almost always going to come out on top, it means the CDP will always have less money than the LDP, again making it difficult for the party to grow. While the CDP's predecessors, the Democratic Party, did break this trend in 2009, the three years the Democratic Party governed was very tumultuous. As the party leaders broke some campaign promises, there was several corruption scandals, and infighting took place. While some of this can be blamed on the business class and bureaucracy being hostile towards the Democrats, it did lead some to view the liberal opposition as ineffective and inexperienced. There also is criticism from the left, that the party holds very little ideology and its policies won't actually transform Japan. The CDP is without a doubt the leading opposition party in Japan, but it will be an uphill battle for it to defeat the LDP. The next largest opposition party in Japan is the Japan Innovation Party, or Nippon Ishin no Kai. Ishin is a conservative party, largely based around the city of Osaka. It started off as a local party fighting for greater autonomy and development in Osaka, but turned into a national movement in 2015. Where they fall into the political spectrum is a bit complicated. Some have described them as centrist, while others have actually labeled them as far-right. 
it seems the party's main goal is to support a small government in the conservative sense of what a small government should do. It received a surge of support in 2021 from those that didn't like the new incoming LDP government, which was moderating. It, as stated previously, is largely found in Osaka. They do have supporters outside the city, with 13% of Tokyo voting for them, but overall it is mostly found in urban Osaka. Its supporters are also more likely to be under 50 and not be pensioners. It currently has 40 representatives and 21 councillors. It is currently led by Nobunuki Baba, a former Sakai city councillor and current representative. As stated previously, Ishin is largely focused on promoting small government. It wants a reduction in bureaucracy, supports free market economics, wants to discourage long-term reliance on social security for individuals, wants less regulation in businesses, and supports free trade. It also is very much in favor of greater autonomy at the local level, wanting to move political power away from Tokyo, and wants to make Osaka the vice capital of Japan, and favors a move from a unitary government to a federal government, with the federal state being limited to just, quote, the essential and most important roles of the state. It also supports same-sex marriage, opposes a female taking the imperial throne, wants free education for all, supports rearming the self-defense forces, wants a directly elected prime minister, and wants to get rid of the House of Councillors. Ishin seems to suffer from having controversial members. The reason some have labeled the party far-right comes from several members criticizing those that talk about comfort women in World War II, with Osaka, a city under Ishin's control, breaking off ties with San Francisco due to a statue dedicated to comfort women being built in San Fran. There also have been allegations of corruption, one member being accused of attempted murder, and another member getting drunk on an official delegation to some disputed islands with Russia, telling the locals that Japan had to go to war over the islands, and then later on the trip asking where he could have sexual fun on the island. Finally, the party is also in an awkward position, as it is too far right to really cooperate with the other opposition parties, which lean to the left, and there have been frequent spats between them and these more left-leaning opposition groups. It does have somewhat friendly relations with the LDP and Kometo, but its new set of voters who voted for Ishen to protest the LDP may force the party into a more confrontational relationship with them. This ultimately leaves Ishen with very few allies, and serving more as a pressure group everywhere but Osaka. Next we go to the Democratic Party of the People, or Kokumin Minshuto, or DPP. In order to fully explain the history of the DPP, we'd have to explain a lot of complicated opposition mergers and organizations. So, to simplify, after the 2017 House of Representatives election, what roughly is the DPP was formed? In 2020, the majority of the DPP merged with the Liberals to form the CDP. However, the right of the DPP opposed this, and instead chose to remain in the DPP, promoting what it calls reform centrism, in between liberalism and conservatism. So, it is broadly supported by those left of the LDP, but right of the CDP. It tends to get the most support really broadly in the south, particularly in the Kagawa prefecture. It also seems to get a decent amount of union support, especially among factory workers, caregivers, and rental workers. It currently has 10 representatives and 13 councillors. It is currently led by Yuichiro Tamaki, a representative. Also fun fact, it seems a cute yellow bunny is the party's unofficial mascot. DPP backs broadly center-right economics and, quote, realistic pacifism. It supports deregulation, a reduction in taxes, and, quote, responsible redistributive policies. It supports more funds towards the self-defense forces and greater defensive measures, but argues that Japan should also focus more resources on building ties with China and South Korea, and even North Korea so long as they denuclearize, and opposes sending troops to far-off conflicts around the world. It also supports a big social safety net for seniors, wants children's education to be revamped with the upcoming rise of AI, and supports decentralization. I'd imagine the DPP probably gets criticized for similar reasons many centrist parties around the world get criticized for, being in the middle. The left probably criticizes them for supporting the status quo, while the right probably criticizes them for being friendly with China and being pacifist. The opposition probably sees them as stooges or useful idiots for the LDP, while the government probably sees them as incompetent and inexperienced with actually running the country. The DPP also just doesn't have as solid or reliable of a support base when compared to the other parties we have talked about, so it's much harder for them to effectively pass policy or move the country in a certain direction. The next party, however, has a pretty reliable and loyal support base. The Japanese Communist Party, or Nihon Kyonsanto, 
or JCP, is a left-wing party, embracing what it calls scientific socialism. It is one of the oldest parties in Japan, existing since the 20s, and has a fairly stable support base, getting between 5-13% to of the vote almost every election since the late 60s. It is actually one of the largest communist parties in the world, with almost 300,000 card-carrying members. It has pretty much always been the most left-leaning party in the Diet, serving sometimes as friend, sometimes as left-wing rival to the Japanese liberals. Its support base is mostly found in urban areas, especially in Tokyo, Kyoto, and Kochi, but are also found in Okinawa and the northern parts of the country. They also are more likely to be younger, and apparently teachers' unions tend to be stereotyped as communist strongholds. It currently has 10 representatives and 11 councillors. It is currently headed by Keizu Oshii, a representative. The JCP doesn't call for a socialist revolution right now, rather it calls for a democratic revolution, which they interpret as breaking away from the US and removing tyrannical corporations. It wants Japan to break its military alliances with the US, and instead embrace neutrality on the world stage, and criticizes American economic influence in Japan. It wants to increase democratic regulations on large corporations, supports greater workers' rights, supports food self-sufficiency, and supports progressive and corporate taxes. It also argues that the imperial house should be abolished and replaced with a Republican leader, is supportive of greater LGBTQ rights, supports a feminist social policy, and supports electoral reform. The JCP's big problem is that they are much more left-wing than the rest of the parties in Japan, which makes pretty much all of them weary of them. The right, unsurprisingly, doesn't want to work with them, and the more moderate liberal opposition sees them as too extreme and controversial. There is actually a common critique that the communists serve as a spoiler candidate, splitting the anti-LDP vote, and thus making it easier for the LDP to stay in power. While the party has at times criticized the CCP, you can hear right-wingers often claim the JCP is funded by the CCP, or are useful idiots to them with their foreign policy. The communists also are actually monitored by the Japanese government, because they are technically labeled a anti-social group that could potentially disrupt society. So communists are actually spied on by the police, and the communists frequently protest this, saying the state is harassing them. This ultimately makes it quite frankly unappealing to join the communists, for fear of the police standing outside your house and bothering you. So those are the large parties, and we will now go to the smaller parties. Reiwa Shinsengumi is a left-leaning party and is a part of the opposition. The party's name doesn't really have a good translation into English. Reiwa is a reference to the current era in Japanese history, which was announced the day Reiwa was created, and Shinsengumi is a reference to an old samurai unit from the 19th century. While it would be cool if Reiwa's leaders were all samurai, it instead is led by famous actor Taro Yamamoto. Yamamoto and his allies left the CDP when the DPP merged in it, wanting a more left-wing and principled party. It currently serves as an ally to the CDP and the communist, acting almost as a bridge between the two, it gets the most support in and around Tokyo. It currently has three representatives and five councillors. Yamamoto is also a former representative and current councillor. Rewa outlines its 14 main points on its website. It wants the sales and gasoline tax to be abolished, supports universal basic income, and wants to reduce social insurance premiums. It also wants to outright ban nuclear weapons, supports a Green New Deal, wants to crack down on domestic violence, wants more regulations around the breeding and selling of animals, and wants to be carbon neutral by 2050. It also supports more funds going towards disaster infrastructure, supports greater renters' rights, and wants education to be free. The last party in the House of Representatives is the Social Democratic Party, or the Shikai Minshuto, or SDP. The SDP is, as the name would suggest, a Social Democratic Party. It was formed from the remnants of the Japanese Socialist Party in 1996. It has historically served as a left-wing ally to the Japanese liberals, often trying to push them left. They, for the past couple elections, have hovered around 2% of the vote, and are often tied to the CDP in order to survive and remain in the diet. It supports broadly center-left economics, an expansion of the welfare state, a pacifist Japan, and a progressive social policy. It gets the most support in Okinawa. It currently has one representative and one counselor. It is currently led by Mizuo Fukushima, a counselor and former minister of state. So the remaining parties all have some presence in the House of Councillors, albeit a small presence, and generally serve more as protest votes than anything else. The first of these councillors-only parties we have is the NHK Party, or NHK-to. 
The NHK party is a party whose primary purpose is to get rid of the NHKs, the National Broadcaster of Japan, licensed, and make the NHK more like a subscription and less like a required payment. The party is broadly populist, anti-establishment, and usually quite eccentric. It since being founded in 2013 has gone through nine different name changes, with my favorite being the party fighting against NHK in the trial for violating Article 72 of the Attorney Act really rolls off the tongue. It also does support nuclear power, deregulation, and was a crackdown on North Korea's operations in Japan. It's generally seen more as a protest vote against the NHK and the political parties generally. It currently has two councillors. Its leader is Takashi Tashibana, a former local councillor from the Greater Tokyo area and former member of the House of Councillors. After that we have the Okinawa Social Mass Party. The party is unsurprisingly based in Okinawa and is broadly left-wing. It is mainly based around protesting the American military's involvement in Okinawa, protesting the construction of new bases on the island, wanting there to eventually be no military bases on the island, supporting a pacifist foreign policy. It also supports more autonomy to the island, and wants to do more to protect the environment in Okinawa. It currently has one councillor, who is also the party's leader, Keiko Itokazu, who also was a former local assemblywoman in Okinawa. Finally, the last party we will talk about is San Saito, or the party of do-it-yourself. San Saito is a recently created party. It largely was founded as a protest of Kishida moving the LDP away from the Japanese right. It is more supported by younger voters and those who were opposed to COVID restrictions. It wants to rearm the Japanese military, opposes COVID measures, supports a nationalistic education, and wants to control the increase of foreign workers into Japan. It has one counselor. It is currently led by Manabu Matsuda, a former representative. So those are the parties of Japan. Going back to the beginning when I asked why the LDP is so dominant, it's a combination of the LDP having a highly organized, powerful, and actually I'd argue somewhat diverse support base, a divided opposition that is split between many different factions and groups, having an ally in Komeito, and then finally a political and electoral system that greatly enhances the power of whichever party wins the most votes. So up next I'll talk about the history of Cape Verde, then I'll talk about Turkish political parties, and then I'll talk about Danish political parties and the recent election that happened there. So yeah, thanks for watching, thanks for listening. Um, if you want, you can email me at whydocountriesexist at gmail.com for your thoughts, comments, suggestions, or hate mail. Take care, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.